Myco designs, manufactures, and sells hydraulic components and systems for heavy-duty off-road vehicles and equipment. We have been providing our customers with quality hydraulic braking technology and services for over 50 years. Welcome to our series of Myco product training presentations. This presentation covers accumulator charging valves. Let's get started by explaining what exactly accumulator charging valves are. An accumulator charging valve is a hydraulic component that charges system accumulators and unloads system pumps so as not to carry extra heat and energy into the system oil or consume horsepower from the engine driven pumps. MICO has accumulator charging valves for use in single and dual brake systems as well as load sensing systems. There are also accumulator charging valves with a built-in relief valve to control the main hydraulic system pressure. The single accumulator charging valve is designed for installation in an open center hydraulic system between the pump and its relief valve and the downstream secondary hydraulic devices. It supplies oil to an accumulator from an open center circuit on demand. This is accomplished at a preset rate of gallons per minute at a selected pressure and is relatively constant within the preset pressure limits. Flow to the downstream secondary hydraulic devices will be reduced fractionally for a short time when the accumulator is charging. This will not noticeably affect the operation of these components. Full system pressure is available to the downstream secondary hydraulic devices at all times, provided oil delivery and pressure from the pump and relief valve are not impeded. Accumulator charging rates and upper and lower accumulator pressure limits are set at the time of manufacture. At pump startup, spring force positions the valve spool, causing flow restriction to the flow through port. Fluid travels through the filter and past the poppet valve to the accumulator port. Spring force holds the low limit check ball open and closes the high limit check ball. The pilot valve spool only allows one of the check balls to be open at a time. Flow to the accumulator also passes the open low limit check ball and enters cavity 1. Simultaneously, pressure is building in cavity 2 and moving the valve spool. This allows hydraulic flow to the flow through port. Position of the valve spool continues to change until the fluid pressure force and the spring forces are balanced at both ends of the valve spool. Spring force on the valve spool generates a pressure differential on the pressure port side of the valve spool, assuring that pump pressure is always higher than the accumulator pressure. This guarantees priority of the charging function. When accumulator pressure reaches the high charge limit, the high limit check ball opens and the low limit check ball closes. With the high limit check ball open, fluid in cavity 1 is allowed to flow to the tank port. Fluid pressure in cavity 2 will move the valve spool toward spool stop, increasing the flow clearance to the flow through port. The check valve seats, isolating accumulator pressure. The charging valve is now in the standby mode. Pump pressure is now equal to the spring force or any downstream requirements, whichever is greater. The charging valve returns to the charging mode when accumulator pressure drops to a level where spring force unseats the low limit check ball. The rate at which the accumulator charges depends on the size of the orifice in the check valve seat. The charging valve high and low pressure threshold is determined by the high and low limit check balls. Hydraulic pressure reacts against the diametrical areas of the check balls as they seat against the insert. Notice A and B areas on this diagram. While the accumulator is charging, hydraulic pressure acts on the seat area of the high limit check ball until it overcomes the spring force and allows the low limit check ball to seat. At this point, the accumulator is charged to its high limit and accumulator pressure is now acting upon the seat area of the low limit check ball. The low limit check ball remains in the seated position until the pressure stored in the accumulator is depleted to the point where spring force overcomes the force of accumulator pressure acting on the seat area of the low limit check ball. At the point where the low limit check ball is unseated, the accumulator is at the low limit charge. The high and low limit charge pressures and or threshold can be changed by changing the diameter of the check balls or the angle of the seat on the insert. The dual accumulator charging valve performs essentially the same function as the single accumulator charging valve. When the dual charging valve is used in a split hydraulic brake system, each individual axle is separately controlled. This valve uses an internal spool valve to control hydraulic system flow to pressurize both accumulators. 
The primary advantage of the dual accumulator charging valve is that if half of the brake system fails, the remaining half will continue to function. A dual charging valve charges the accumulator from the open center circuit upon demand and within its preset operating charge rate and maximum pressure. At pump startup, spring force positions the valve spool, causing flow restriction to the flow through port. Fluid travels through a filter, past the check valve and the poppet valves, to the accumulator ports. Spring force holds the low limit check ball open and closes the high limit check ball. The pilot valve spool only allows one check ball to be open at a time. Flow to the accumulators also passes the open low limit check ball and enters cavity 1. Simultaneously, pressure is building in cavity 2 and moving the valve spool. This allows hydraulic flow to the flow through port. The position of the valve spool continues to change until the force of fluid pressure and spring forces are balanced at both ends of the valve spool. Spring force on the valve spool generates a pressure differential on the pressure port side of the valve spool, assuring that pump pressure is always higher than accumulator pressure. This guarantees priority of the charging function. When accumulator pressure reaches the high charge limit, the high limit check ball opens and the low limit check ball closes. With the high limit check ball open, fluid in cavity 1 is allowed to flow to the tank port. Fluid pressure in cavity 2 will move the valve spool toward the spool stop, increasing the flow clearance to the flow through port. The check valve seats, isolating accumulator pressure. The charging valve is now in standby mode. Pump pressure is now equal to the spring force or any downstream requirements, whichever is greater. The poppet valves are designed so only one can be closed at a time. Pressure in the accumulator with the higher charge is held by one poppet valve, while pressure in the accumulator with the lower charge is held by the other poppet valve. Pressure at the low limit check ball is always from the accumulator with the lower pressure. The charging valve returns to the charging mode when accumulator pressure drops to the level where spring force unseats the low limit check valve ball. The rate at which the accumulators are charged depends on the size of the orifice in the check valve seat. High and low pressure limit settings are determined in the same manner previously explained for single accumulator charging valves. The MICO single and dual accumulator charging valves with relief incorporate a main system relief valve. This valve was developed for installation in an open center hydraulic system between the pump and the downstream secondary hydraulic devices. These valves supply oil to system accumulators from an open center circuit on demand. This is accomplished at a preset rate of gallons per minute at a selected pressure and is relatively constant within the preset pressure limits. Flow to the downstream secondary hydraulic devices will be reduced fractionally for a short time when the accumulator is charging. This does not noticeably affect the operation of these components. Full system pressure is available to the downstream secondary hydraulic devices at all times provided oil delivery and pressure from the pump is not impeded. The function of these accumulator charging valves with system relief are the same as the single and dual charging valves previously discussed. However, these valves incorporate an integral relief valve, which controls the main hydraulic system pressure. The integral relief valve communicates fluid back to the tank through the tank port in the charging valve. It must also be able to relieve the entire gallons per minute output from the main hydraulic system pump. This diagram shows the valve in the charging mode. This diagram shows the valve in the standby mode. The load sensing accumulator charging valves operate in a flow and pressure on demand system. The control section of these valves send a pilot signal to a pressure compensated load sense pump when fluid is required. It maintains reserve volume and pressure in the accumulator allowing the pump to stand by when there is no demand for fluid. These valves are available in either single or dual designs. The single models are normally used in single systems in conjunction with one accumulator and a single brake valve. The dual models are used in split systems with two or more accumulators and a tandem or dual brake valve. The charge rate and upper and lower accumulator pressure limits are set at the time of manufacture. Various charge rates, high and low limit settings, and pressure ranges between high and low limits are available to conform to specific customer requirements. At pump startup, fluid enters the accumulator charging valve and moves past the check valve and poppet valves to the accumulator ports. 
spring force holds the low limit check ball open and closes the high limit check ball. The pilot valve spool only allows one of the check balls to be open at a time. Any pressure seen in the accumulators while charging is also communicated past the low limit check ball, out the load sensing port and back to the pump. This is the positive load sensing signal that sustains fluid displacement to the accumulator charging valve. When the accumulator charging valve reaches its high charge limit, the high limit check ball opens and the low limit check ball closes. With high limit check ball open, the load sensing pilot line is now open to the tank or atmospheric pressure. This causes the fluid flow from the pump to the accumulator charging valve to cease. The check valve seats, isolating the accumulator pressure. The charging valve is now in standby mode. Pump pressure is now equal to the spring force or any downstream requirements, whichever is greater. The poppet valves are designed so that only one can be closed at a time. Pressure in the accumulator with the higher charge is held by one of the poppet valves, and the check valve holds the pressure in the accumulator with the lower charge. Therefore, pressure at the low limit check ball is always from the accumulator with the lower pressure. The charging valve returns to the charging mode when accumulator pressure drops to the level where spring force unseats the low limit check ball. Pressure is again communicated through the load sensing pilot line. This signal causes fluid to be displaced to the accumulator charging valve. The rate at which the accumulators are charged depends on the size of the orifice in the check valve seat. High and low pressure limit settings are determined in the same manner as explained previously for the single accumulator charging valves. Meeting the needs of our customers is the number one goal at MICO. If you need additional information, please contact us by internet, fax, or phone. MICO is ready to serve you.